Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Will Walker and this is the William Walker Company Project Channel. This time I am making a cribbage board. Uh, this was a commission for some clients. I got a chance to use some really pretty bird's eye maple um, and walnut, which I always love. Um, it's got uh, hidden storage for a deck of cards and the actual cribbage pegs themselves. Um, so stick around and I'll show you how I make it. So I went online and there's actually a lot of cribbage board templates. Um, so I found one that I liked and then I brought it into Photoshop and then I just sized it how I wanted it. Then I went ahead and printed it on plain paper. Then I cut out the template and tried to stay pretty close to the line but not worrying too much about being absolutely perfect. Where I live, you can't buy short sections of figured hardwood and you have to buy long lengths, which is unfortunate if you only need a small piece, but it does give you the advantage of being able to choose what section of the board has the most figure for your project. At the joiner, I flatten one face and one edge of the piece of maple. Then it's over to the planer to clean up the other side, and yes, I know my Planer knives are absolutely trashed right now, but this isn't something a little sanding can't clean up. If you've never seen bird's eye maple, there's a really pretty figure in the green. Now it's time to take that template we cut out earlier and attach it to the top piece. I'm using 3M's Super 77 spray adhesive. There are a lot on the market, I just happen to like this one. Just spray it on the template, let it set up for a few seconds until it's tacky, then line up one edge of the paper with the edge of the board you just jointed earlier. Head over to the table saw and cut off the excess, riding that jointed edge along the fence. Now, cut out the radius part of the top piece using the bandsaw. Take the top piece over to the disc sander and clean up that edge you just cut with the bandsaw. If you don't have one of these disc sanders, I highly recommend it. They're not expensive. I think I got this one from Harbor Freight on sale for like 50 bucks. I use it, I think, every project. I haven't made an adjustable fence system for my drill press yet, so I like to clamp a framing square to the table to act as a temporary fence. There are a lot of holes in this project, so you're going to want something to reference off of to make sure all of your holes are aligned. Once you're done with one row on one side, turn the piece around and reference the other side on the fence and drill those holes before you move the fence. If the drill bit and the template don't line up exactly, that's okay. Just be sure to always use the same side you started with when you set up the temporary fence so the holes you drill will be the same distance from each edge of the piece. Use the depth stop adjustment on the drill press so all of the holes are the same depth. Don't drill the center hole marked black just yet. Now for the base. I chose walnut because I really like walnut as a contrasting wood and it's just a dream to work with. Uh, I cut it about an inch longer than the top piece. The walnut actually came surfaced on two sides, but the edges still needed to be dressed and cut to width. I put the maple on top of the walnut and get the spacing around the edge and mark it with a pencil. Then I use hot glue to hold everything together temporarily. I'm using a piece of half inch scrap to help me line everything up before the glue sets. Now, back at the drill press, I can release the depth stop and drill through both pieces at the black marked center hole at the same time. I like using hot glue because it's strong enough to hold things in place, but then it's easy to pry them apart and scrape away the glue when you're done. I'm using 8th inch brass rods for the pivot pin. That's the same diameter as the drill bit for all of the holes. To remove templates, I like to use mineral spirits in a spray bottle. They usually just peel right off. Time to bore corresponding holes for the magnets. Use the same size Forstner bit as the magnets you're using, minor three quarter. For the spot for the deck of cards, I'm hogging out most of the material with a Forstner bit. You can also do this with a plunge router, but I don't have a spiral upcutting bit or guide bushings for templates. 
Whenever I'm doing chisel work, I like to scribe my lines with a knife to reference my chisel on instead of trying to line up my chisel with a pencil line. After marking the center line, I use a 1 inch Forstner bit to bore out two holes right next to each other and connect them using a chisel for a spot for the pegs. Mix some fast setting two part epoxy and mount the magnets and the pivot pin. Be sure to mount the magnets with the appropriate polarities for the top and bottom pieces so that the magnets attract each other instead of repel. Once they're set, they're not coming out. Time to sand. I start with 120 grit and then ease all the edges by hand. Once everything looks clean and smooth, I start working my way up the grits. I got this finishing abrasive set from Peachtree Woodworking. It's called Micro Mesh. It goes to like 12,000 grit. I don't pay attention to what grit I finish with. I just stop when I have the sheen I'm looking for. So I could leave it just like it is, put whatever finish I want on it, and it would be a beautiful cribbage board. But my client wants to give this to their dad as a gift, and they wanted to put the logo of the country club that their dad is a member of on the board. So what I did was I just took some uh, white shipping labels and I ripped the sheet in half to save on material. I <clears throat> took all of the actual labels off, which left me this kind of waxy uh, paper, which I can throw into my inkjet printer, lay everything out in Photoshop, and print it from there, and that'll help me transfer the logo onto the board. I'm here in Photoshop using that same template file from before. I dropped the logo file for the country club on top, placed it where I wanted it, and made sure to keep all of the letters in solid wood area. Hide the template layer and flip the canvas horizontally to make a mirror image. Change your canvas size to reflect the paper you're using. Then print the document, making sure you enter your custom paper size in your printer dialog. Mine is four and a quarter by 11. I put a piece of painter's tape on the back of the transfer to keep it in one place. It's really easy to smudge the ink, so be extra careful. I use a piece of scrap plywood to put even pressure down on the transfer. Let the ink dry for a few hours, then apply finish. I'm using an equal mixture of spar urethane and boiled linseed oil. I thin it out with mineral spirits to a consistency that I can wipe on easily and apply it in thin coats. I really like this finish, but it does take a while to dry, so be patient. As a final touch, I added these rubber feet I got from Rockler. So that's it guys, a custom cribbage board. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section, and as always, if you like what I'm doing, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching.